I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. In today's video, I am going to be doing a tutorial on this leopard done in colored pencil. I used two pencils on this, my oil-based polychromos and luminance, which are a wax-based pencil. They're a lot softer than the polychromos. They work so well together. For this piece, I am working on Fabriano Artistico Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. This piece was such a good example of even when you think something's going terrible, just finish it anyway. Everything that I do, I will always go through these really ugly stages where I just want to throw it away. This one I was tempted to burn. The background I just was not getting the effect that I wanted with the background. I was having a bad airbrush night where my hose kept breaking and I had to fix it. It was just one thing after another. But Throughout all of this, I just wasn't taking the time to pay attention to what I was doing enough in that background and I was not at all happy with it. So then I went on top of that background with colored pencil to soften it all down and it took quite a while to get enough layers on there to get the soft effect that I was going for. But the moral of this story is even though you're going to hit points in your work that you just think it looks absolutely terrible and you don't want to finish it, just keep working on it until it looks good. You guys should be very excited. This week I am using a new microphone so the sound should be much better for this tutorial. I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings and drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, and vlogs most weekends. So make sure you subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, all the social media sites, links below in the video description to keep up with news, my newest work, and to see real-time clips of whatever it is that I'm working on. For this one, if you do want to see real-time clips of how slow of a process this is, I do have two videos that are about five minutes long that I posted on my Facebook page. Now we can move on to the tutorial. I started by airbrushing in my background. The problem was that I kept overworking it and losing the softness that I really wanted. This is why it's a bad idea to start painting when you're really tired and just want to go to sleep. I finally decided that I would go over it the next day in colored pencil to soften everything out and get the colors more how I wanted. The funny thing was, there were several times that I got the background to look nice, just not for this piece. It wasn't the look that I was going for. See, we all have our off days. I had used frisket on this to cover my leopard so that I could be really messy as I airbrushed. Okay for not having to paint within the lines. Next day, and I'm finally rested enough to pay attention to what I'm doing. I did several layers over what I had airbrushed to create the softer look that I wanted. After all of that was layered in, I blended it out with a Mona Lisa odorless paint thinner and a soft synthetic brush. It took about five layers to get the softness that I was going for. Point, I was still not really sure if I was going to throw this one out and start over. So I didn't want to waste my new luminance pencils on the background because they're really expensive. So my Prismas, which I don't care if I waste, I used quite a bit on this along with my Polychromos. And the Prismas I wanted to use because they are so soft, it was faster to cover a large area and get that soft look. Finally, I can move on to the leopard. I started with his ear, breaking up the solid white line and creating some of the little hairs goal of this piece was strong lighting on the leopard. You'll often hear me say not to use straight white or to leave an area straight white, but this is going to be one of those exceptions. If the ear is pretty straightforward, the fur there is so short that it can be shaded in solidly without leaving individual hairs showing. The portion of the face is where the light is quite strong, so even though technically those spots are black, you're going to want to keep them really light. I use different shades of browns to block in those spots on that area of the face. I want to watch your reference photo closely. The things to really look for at this stage is the fur and how long or short that fur is on that area of the face. This will determine how long you want each pencil stroke. Keep your pencil strokes short for the shorter fur and longer for the long fur. I know it seems like common sense, but it's a mistake that a lot of people make. If you get lazy and start putting in long lines just to cover up more area quickly, your leopard is not going to look right who have been watching my videos for any length of time know that I like to jump around quite a bit as I work. I start by loosely blocking in my general dark areas and the direction of the fur in various areas around the face. If you're more comfortable working on a tiny area at a time until that area is, is finished, go ahead and do that. Use whichever method works best for you. I now layered a light cream color over the base of the bridge of the nose and I'm going back over it with different brown tones to create the lines of fur. That base out with paint thinner before I move on. This pushes all of the colored pencil into the paper, removing the grainy look. Okay, I start by outlining the dark areas with black. Over the iris with some tan, gold, and orange shades. The eye is not finished at this point. I'll come back later to add several additional layers. I'm just blocking in everything very, very loosely right now. To building up the fur on the face, I again start with blocking in my darker spots, paying close attention to the direction of the fur on my reference photo. My pencil strokes are extremely short in this area to keep the fur looking short. Watch out that you don't go too crazy putting lots and lots of pencil strokes, otherwise he will end up looking kind of wiry and scruffy. 
While you do want the texture in the fur, if you overdo it, it won't look right. More detail does not always equate to looking more realistic. The detail has to be accurate. I'm now slowly building up the colors in the face. I will always start quite a bit lighter than I need to be in the end. It's better to start too light and darken up as you go than to start too dark. It's not so easy to lighten up an area that was too dark to start with. Down to the spots on the top of the head, my pencil strokes are quite a bit longer now. While I am using a black pencil for these, I'm not applying much pressure yet. I use a cream shade to fill in the lighter fur. After that, I go with a reddish brown tone around each of those black spots. The black spots aren't purely black. They are all bordered with that reddish brown color. The whole area out with paint thinner to fill in the grainy look of the paper. If you've not watched my video about blending colored pencils, you may want to check that one out. To blend it out, I go back through and start layering in my colors even darker. When I'm a few layers into the fur on the face, I'm better defining my pencil strokes to create the look of fur. I use a white luminance pencil to both strengthen the light areas on the head as well as to start building more texture in the fur. Ain't no single area of the leopard's lighter fur tones are a single color. Everything has several layers of many colors. This is the reason I can't ever give a definite answer as to what colors I use. I use almost all the colors at some point. Fur inside the next year. I start by adding the lighter tones first and then I go back and fill in the darker areas in between. I use lighter browns to fill in the dark areas and then my darkest tones last. The ear takes several layers to build up to the right texture. Remember not to do random pencil lines all over the place. Follow the direction of the fur in your reference photo. I say this all the time because it really is so important. You can add all the detail you want to your finished piece, but it won't look realistic if that detail was wrong. Area under the eye. I start with one of my darker cream colors, and at this point I'm not adding individual fur marks, but just getting a solid base color. Blending that out with paint thinner, I go back in with my black pencil and darken up the spots. I'm now back to paying attention to the direction of the fur and creating that texture. I also want to point out that I'm not filling in the color where the whiskers are going to go. I'm leaving those white so that I can keep them nice and bright later on. On the lighter areas, I'm using shades of brown and even white to create the fur. I start by making lots and lots of fur marks that alone look really fake and unnatural, but later I'll go back through and overlap fur on top of those areas. If the fur isn't clumped and overlapping, it will look unnatural. Making deeper reds and browns and even orange to bring out the richer tones in the leopard's fur. This is not being applied in the shorter brush strokes or pencil strokes that I added the initial fur, but by lightly going over all of it, almost like we would do with glazes and painting. You can still see the detail underneath, but it's softened out quite a bit. Go over those areas with a white pencil to add more texture. This luminance pencil is opaque and soft like the Prismacolor, but it's a much higher quality pencil and it isn't as prone to breakage. As you work, keep checking your reference photo. Don't look at it briefly and think, okay, I got this. Keep checking your work against that reference photo. Onto the fur on the body, my pencil strokes are getting much longer, adding to the look of longer fur. By lightly blocking in the spots, still paying close attention to the direction of each pencil mark. The area of the body has a lot of red and orange tones, so I'm adding more orange on my base colors than I did on the head. For this, I'm not adding so much of the individual texture yet, but keeping my browns and oranges more solid. The thing that I should note is that as the fur on the body gets farther away from the head, I will add less and less detail, keeping my focus and attention towards the head where I want it. Just like on the head, I start with everything very, very light. It's normal to be really excited to get those darker tones in now, but wait, just keep adding more and more light layers. Your end result will be much better and you'll have more depth that way. If you use a heavy hand to start with, you'll damage your paper, which will prevent you from being able to do very much layering later on. I my first layers out with paint thinner, and then I go back and continue layering. I'm starting now to pay attention to the direction of the fur again, even with my browns. Now's a good time to start building up that texture. I can also darken up my black spots at this point, making it easier to judge my values in the brown tones. For spots, I knew those would have to be dark, dark black, but I held off on making them too dark because I didn't want the black to overpower and bleed into my creams and browns when I did my initial blending with the paint thinner. When I blend my first layers, I generally wash over the entire area, not paying attention to detail or working around areas. Now that my blacks are darker, I will have to be a bit more precise in blending with future layers of the paint thinner. Reddish browns again to work around my dark spots. The dark spots are black in the centers, but they fade to that reddish brown before coming in contact with the lighter fur. Another thing that I should point out, the really white areas of the fur on the chest, shoulder, and parts of the outside of the face and ear are kept white in the first place. Don't shade them with a darker color and think you're going to lighten them back up at that point. I added a layer of white to help keep the areas clean, but there is no detail or white fur marks within most of that. It just left solid white. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you next week for another painting or drawing video. Hi guys, if you liked this video, please let me know in the comments below or give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you have ideas for future tutorials that you would like to see, let me know that in the comments below too. I'll see you guys this weekend for the vlog.